In this first section, we're going to review what are drain and undrain problems in portal mechanics from just a high level. We have learned what is Terzaghi effective stress. Terzaghi's effective stress allow us to compute the effective stress that a portal solid uh, feels. And this is equal in vectorial form to the effective stress, let's denote it with sigma as a tensor, to be equal to the total stress S minus the pore pressure, and we multiply that times the identity tensor so that that affects only the normal stresses. That's what we know as Terzaghi effective stress, and we, what allow us to calculate strains and uh, failure for uh, porous materials. Well, recently we have seen that uh, in order to calculate accurately some of these deformations, we need to use a corrected version, which is the Biot effective stress, and it's part of the theory and the applications of pore elasticity. In pore elasticity, we also have an equation of the effective stress, which now it is going to be equal to the total stress minus the BO coefficient times the pore pressure times the identity tensor. And in this case, this is what we call Biot's effective stress. Okay, this effective stress law corrects Terzaghi's effective stress and it's applicable whenever we are dealing with rocks at high stresses and also that have a high stiffness. But pore elasticity is a lot more than just an effective stress equation. Uh, you might see some uh, models that they claim that they solve pore elasticity just because they have an effective stress equation. But pore elasticity is a lot more than just the BL effective stress equation. Pore elasticity also allows to calculate changes of porosity. It allows us to calculate porosity strain. Those changes of porosity, for example, if we had a fluid in the pore space, will allow us to calculate what is called an undrained bulk modulus. An undrained bulk modulus is a bulk modulus that takes into account the compressibility of the fluids within the porous medium whenever the loading is so fast that the fluids cannot escape. And in order to take into account all these processes, uh, you need the equations that we're going to see later on, which are based on the theory of poro elasticity. Whenever, for example, you have these undrained loadings, you might experience a change of pressure within the pore space that can be explained by pore elasticity. And pore elasticity is also very useful and very important to explain some phenomena that we see in wave propagation in porous solids, which is not the same as just wave propagation in just a solid. In portal solid, we're going to see a phenomenon which is called squirt flow. And it is also related to undrained loading. What happens is when we have a wave, like for example, a P wave that produces a volumetric strain in a portal solid, that volumetric strain is going to compress the fluids wherever the solid is compressing and is going to send those fluids to regions where the solid is expanding. 
Let me make a schematic of this. Let's imagine a bar through which we have a P wave. And now this bar is made out of a porous solid. Well, we know that for the P wave, there are going to be regions where we have compression and some other regions where we have extension. And the square flow is going to develop from regions of compression or contraction of the fluid to regions of extension. Let me complete this grid. So we can see a little bit better what's going on in here. Okay, I'm going to go again into the compression. And I hope that you can notice from my grid that in this region I have compression, in this other region I have extension, and the wave that I have uh, in here, it could be seen as a wave, let me put some maxis, where as a function of length we have a volumetric strain which is in regions it is a compression let's assume that as positive and in other regions is extension so this would be our wave and of course this would be our wavelength mm -hmm. and the square flow as we say is going to develop from regions of compression to regions of extension all of that can be explained uh, through the theory of pore elasticity. Uh, this type of a square flow is going to cause attenuation of these waves, and uh, particularly we're talking about elastic waves, and also is going to cause a dispersion of the waves. What is dispersion? Dispersion is a change of velocity with uh, frequency. All right, all these problems uh, are going to be uh, solved by the theory of pore elasticity, or at least partially solved. And in our class, what we're going to see are two end members of these solutions. So we're going to simplify a little bit our solutions and what we're going to do is uh, let me finish writing this is to divide the problems in problems which are drained and problems which are undrained the actual solution of some of these problems lies in between uh, these two. Like for example, the problem of square flow, it involves drain and undrain loading. And in order to solve that, what we're going to develop later on, it's what is called the diffusivity equation for pore elasticity. And this one allows us to solve pore pressure as a function of time and space, considering mechanics and considering uh, fluid flow. So for now, before we go into the diffusivity equation, we'll start with the drain solutions, then with the undrained solutions, and once we develop the undrained solutions, we'll get into the diffusivity equation.